For the Banner Saga, we set out to make the experience of a story-driven, role-playing game with tactical combat, set in an original world heavily influenced by Viking culture. For the Banner Saga factions, we've taken the same combat system and opened the doors wide for multiplayer. Welcome to Strand, home to both men and the giants called Varl who inhabit the north. Hire allies and form a warband because the clans are about to be torn apart by the politics of war, and the victors will be the ones who come together to form the strongest factions. Strand is your view to the world of factions and a living city that will change over the course of time. First, head to the Weaver's Hut, where you'll craft and customize the banner that represents your clan. Then, take what influence you have to the Mead Hall, where your renown will convince capable but inexperienced warriors to join your struggle. Each class fills an important and unique role in combat, so choose wisely. Your new recruits will wait for you in the Proving Grounds, alongside the other units under your command. Form a team of six from any combination of characters you've hired, but take care, the marching orders you set here will determine what order they act in combat. When you're ready, head to the Great Hall and join the battles tearing across the beleaguered city, and you'll always be able to find eager and ready opponents online, or spar with your friends in private matches. Combat in the Banner Saga is no casual experience. We put a razor-sharp focus on strategy. Factions is a turn-based game centered around choices, a combination of pure strategy and positioning of chess and the special abilities and stats of modern tactical games. Each character has their own strength and armor stats, and this is the most important thing to understand. Your strength determines how much damage you'll do, but it's also your health. As a character loses strength, they do less damage. Armor blocks this damage. This Axeman has a strength of 10 and hits an archer with an armor of 6. You can see she lost 4 strength, and on her next turn she'll do that much less damage. But try to attack an enemy with high armor and you'll be chipping away one strength at a time. Even worse, if your enemy has higher armor than your strength, you could miss the attack completely. You'll need to lower their armor fast. Every turn presents you with a difficult choice. Lower their strength or smash their armor. Mitigate their damage early or set them up to take a big hit in the future. Unlike most strategy games, you won't get far by dogpiling the nearest enemy. Even before you start to consider special abilities, you'll balance multiple choices. Who is my best target? Do I go after their strength or armor? And do I use willpower to boost my attacks? Willpower changes the dynamic even further. By using willpower, your characters can hit harder, move further, or use special abilities. But there's a catch. Willpower doesn't replenish over time, so use it wisely. Willpower may let you run the extra few steps you need to incapacitate an archer in the back row, or may tip the scales to finish off that dangerous character you couldn't quite finish off with a normal attack. While this alone gives every character a ton of choices on every round, that's only the tip of the iceberg. Things really start to heat up when the abilities enter the picture. Each class has an inherent passive that requires skill to use. An Axeman who stands next to an ally forms a shield wall, granting armor bonuses to both himself and his ally. Position multiple Axemen together and you start to multiply this effect. In contrast, a Varl warrior hits so hard that he sends damage out to everyone standing next to his target. On top of this, each class has an activated ability, designed specifically to interact with their passive ability and the other classes on your team, to create an almost limitless array of deep and layered strategies. The Warhawk uses Tempest, hitting multiple enemies, in turn causing a chain reaction of destruction in his wake if played smartly. The Sky Striker can secretly trap a tile, causing her arrow to strike anyone who walks through it, ending their turn. We'll be launching with 12 classes and continue to add more regularly as they're created for the single player release. Decimate your enemies and the battle is over, for now. Fortunately, each kill you make earns your renown whether you win or lose, so don't despair. Even if things are looking grim, go for that one extra kill. A win, however, will move you up the multiplayer ranks and improve the look of your banner for everyone to see. Back in the Proven Grounds, take stock of what you've learned. Should you have done more armor damage? Did your archer run out of willpower just when she needed it most? You decide how best to improve your strategy by upgrading each character individually. Maybe your warrior died too quickly. Spend your hard-earned renown to improve his armor. But you won't be able to max out his stats Maybe you make an archer with high strength and armor to survive longer, or an archer who can trap tiles every turn. Both of these characters can be used on the same team. Maximize your character's potential and you'll have the option to promote, allowing you to choose an advanced class, upgrade their abilities to new levels, and add additional points to their limit. 
When finding an opponent online, you'll be matched against someone who has as many points as you to keep the games fair and fun. Building the best team you can and fighting well is up to you, and there's no end to the choices you can make. As work continues on the Banner Saga, new features will be frequently rolled into factions. Equipable items, computer-controlled skirmishes, and 2v2 co-op battles are all on the way. Look for the Banner Saga factions, free for PC and Mac, on Steam.